I moved around a lot when I was little and acquired many pen pals in the process, and I always saved every letter that everyone ever sent me. So I guess that could be the beginning of my interest in manuscripts. This is one of the most important manuscripts relating to Shakespeare's coat of arms. This manuscript consists of a collection of beautifully colored coats of arms. The arms appear on the right side of each opening, and commentary appears on the left. The commentary is written by the herald Ralph Brooke, and is a critique of his rival William Dethick's professionalism. Brooke felt that Dethick had granted arms to a number of people whose social status was questionable. The image here depicts the arms of William Sanderson, with a crest of the earth and the heavens above it. The arms were granted by Dethick in 1594. Brooke writes shortly afterwards in this manuscript, These arms and crest is given to William Sanderson of London, fishmonger by garter, which William is the first that ever bared or quartered any of the four coats? The crest is not fit for so mean a person, but rather for one that possesses the whole world. A fishmonger, someone who sells fish, might seem like a humble job. But Brooke's description of Sanderson as a person of low social status is far from accurate. Sanderson was a wealthy man who joined the fishmonger's company, one of the ancient livery companies, in the early 1590s. He was well known in Elizabeth's court, and his wife's uncle was Sir Walter Raleigh. The crest with the globe begins to make perfect sense when you consider that Sanderson was a key supporter of the first English globe maker, whose large terrestrial and celestial globes were first published in 1592 and presented to Queen Elizabeth. Brooke and Dethick, the heralds, were both rancorous individuals who were responsible for most of the fighting within the heraldic profession. This manuscript is of particular interest to the Folger because at the beginning it includes a list of additional recipients of arms that Brooke has called into question. The fourth person on this list is none other than William Shakespeare.